Well, hello, good people of Bode Electrons 2023. Uh, I'm Spesh Maloney. I am a composer of uh, music and of sound, uh, working mostly in multimedia and video and film. And uh, today I'm going to talk you through a project uh, I uh, was a part of uh, Christmas uh, last year, 2022. And uh, it's confusingly uh, entitled Multitracking, Multichannel, multidisciplinary, multimedia, and how not to confuse yourself. Because obviously with all the, uh, the multiples going on, it gets very confusing. So what do I mean by this? Multi-tracking, of course, is the, uh, is the layering of uh, different layers, different levels of sounds, different uh, music stems, uh, music tracks. Uh, multi-channel is um, when you start going beyond stereo and uh, playing out uh, several different speakers at the same time. Uh, multidisciplinary, uh, well this project involved uh, quite a few different teams across different disciplines um, from uh, use of uh, video and sound and uh, as well as um, a, a company did dioramas uh, as well as you know set building and, uh, and various other things. So um, it was uh, very multidisciplinary in, the, in that effect and, uh, and lastly multimedia so that is where we are combining uh, audio and visuals, which is, as I said already, is something I do quite a lot of. And uh, I had to come up with a few systems of, uh, of, of coping with uh, all these various elements. So let's start in, uh, in Harrods, uh, in Knightsbridge, in London. And uh, this is what happened. Um, each year, Harrods, the um, famous uh, world-known department store in Knightsbridge, um, they do what's called a uh, Christmas takeover and uh, last year it was the job of Christian Dior, the House of Dior, the, uh, the famous, famous French fashion house and um, it involved taking you know uh, the whole building here, the whole light display and it was a thematic thing that continued uh, pretty much throughout the whole building and it was based on the life and times and works of, of uh, the uh, fashion designer Christian Dior and based uh, on his life story to, uh, uh, to a degree and it was gingerbread Christmas themed and uh, my involvement was in a uh, multi-track, multi-channel, multidisciplinary, multimedia installation piece which happened in the basement. So Nicebridge contracted, uh, uh, Harrods contracted uh, the House of Dior um, in Nicebridge and who in turn, uh, they uh, brought on board this company called My Beautiful City, who um, a big global company who run basically uh, big corporate events. And uh, they brought in several people, including uh, a company called Creative Technologies, uh, who are based in London, um, who I had a lot of work with because these were in charge of the technical installation. And uh, there was uh, the Joanne Tam Studio, which have um, uh, their presence in Italy and Sweden and these were in charge of creating the uh, the little sets and the dioramas that, uh, that exist within the installation. Uh, there are various other contractors because they built this kind of small um, city, this small town um, in the basement of, uh, of, uh, of Harrods and they also brought in Studio Maguire who are long-standing uh, multimedia artists uh, who I've been working with probably over the last nearly 10 years now and uh, that's really where the multimedia aspect came in and they were using uh, LED screens, huge LED screens and uh, projections, uh, micro projections and they employed me uh, to be in charge of uh, everything that you could hear and it needed to tie in with everything else uh, and if we go back to about this time last year um, we all collaborated, we all got together, um, all these different various groups, and uh, we were presented with this walkthrough of what the installation was going to look like. Um, the visualization was quite important because it's quite a hard thing to explain. And uh, we needed to crack on with the content creation. And this was quite significant because, the, uh, because of the size of the installation, they of course had to start building it um, at the same time 
that we were creating the content. So we conceptually had to be very strong from the start so we could kind of run with our creative ideas, um, knowing full well that they were already building all the te new, uh, technology infrastructure needed for it. And uh, we needed to understand the various roles that we were all involved in doing because uh, there was a lot of transdisciplinary um, creativity going on where the uh, the dioramas would be made and they'd have projections on them and they'd have integrated sound effects and music score. And uh, so we had to kind of really start understanding what um, each other were doing. And of course the technical restrictions, because it's an immersive installation, uh, you are limited, uh, you can't just have speakers hanging off the walls and uh, you know playback um, like you would perhaps in a, you know in a, in a in a music studio and uh, the projectors had to be hidden away as best as possible and then we have to start understanding uh, things like sound uh, dispersion and uh, and reflections sonic reflections and light spill and uh, it took a long time to actually understand how we could fill the basement without having to uh, kind of restrict ourselves too much. And lastly, and very importantly, is uh, the client expectations. So this is a, a huge international company, Dior, and um, they uh, were very good in overseeing uh, very uh, various different aspects of the production. Um, there was, you know, a lot of investment that's gone into it. Um, it was their showpiece for the Christmas and. Uh, uh, it was uh, throughout the process they were very um, hands-on in following uh, our progress. So this is our walkthrough that uh, we were presented with. And the idea is for the installation that you enter Harrods and you walk through the perfume counters and then you head to an escalator which will take you down into the basement. And this is kind of where the, the theme begins. So we're going in down there and you've got the fabulous world of Dior, that's what it was entitled. Now this is a holding area in which people were waiting and then you enter um, the, uh, the street uh, recreated uh, of Avenue Montaigne in Paris, which is where the um, Dior fashion house uh, is, uh, have, a, have, a, uh, have a building there. And uh, as you move through the uh, Next section is uh, La Cournoire, which is a chateau which uh, was owned by the House of Dior and uh, the laboratories there. Uh, lots of nature themes and you walk through various kind of nature areas and then into the last section, which is an area called Granville, which is based on a summer house uh, of Christian Dior, where we used to grow up and uh, spent summer vacations in uh, Granville in Normandy in the north of France. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the quick version. Um, this is one of the uh, close up of one of the dioramas, so these uh, the, the dresses, the uh, fashion designers, and uh, the LED screens behind it with a uh, firework section, uh, which had synchronized sound effects and uh, music underscores, spot effects for all the dioramas, uh, representing you know all the various different actions that were happening, and the whole thing had to run synchronized and integrated. How do you do that? It's a very good question. So what we have here is a, a CAD drawing of the building of uh, Montaigne. And uh, it's a V-shape, uh, but we're just looking at it uh, front on. And these sections here, the M's, are representative of all the dioramas and all the various actions that are happening. So this projector, projector projecting onto here, and this was um, an elevator going up and down, and various other things are happening. And these little red dots are where, where I was able to squeeze in some speakers for playback. And this is the back side of it as well. Uh, and similarly, hidden speakers within the building. And um, there's also a section where there was um, sparkles and fireworks kind of firing across the front of the building. So I used a kind of panning effect to fade between the speakers so the sound would follow the sparkle across the building, um, which I remember being concerned at the time as to how effective that would be. And uh, it worked really well, actually, because instead of having just like left and right or even left, center, right, it would move fairly uh, with a good degree of 
uh, localization to where, where the sparkle was. Uh, Le Col Noir uh, is that other building uh, in the second section there, and there were some sound effects for the laboratory, some bubbling sounds, and uh, these are the speakers that we managed to integrate it into the building here. And likewise, in the last building in uh, Granville, we had the summer house, and uh, there was actually actually very little there in terms of the dioramas, so um, it's a bit easier to, to fit them in. Um, the, the family uh, Christmas uh, portrait was um, just kind of a family scene with the camera snapping and some kind of background conversation um, in French, obviously. Um, so, in summer 2022, we started creating content. We split it into four zones, well, I split the music into four zones. Um, that's holding area um, before the curtains. <clears throat> this is just so the previous glue, uh, group can clear and uh, the staff can go around to make sure everything's working and it's tidy and uh, the uh, the next group will be waiting within that zone so there's music playing there and then uh, we had to um, there was a separate kind of parallel story going on with uh, the LED screens and video synchronization there so the fireworks to end was one big element of that but there's also a hot air balloon uh, some kids playing by school and various other small details that happened that also synchronized uh, sound effects and uh, music underscore and then syncing the dioramas uh, which were mechanically run so it's nothing that um, you can sync as easily as something like syncing to video we had to find a way of triggering sound effects at the same time that we were triggering the um, mechanics of the, the dioramas which <clears throat> took a great deal of, uh, of, of organizing and, uh, and testing. And, uh, and last of all is the, uh, the, the music for the whole score. Um, had to fill the entire installation, you know, which is fairly large space, um, perhaps 30 meters by 10 meters. Um, and uh, we had to consider where the music could be you know, heard in all the areas, but we had to avoid things like phasing, um, spill, and bleed and you know being hearing you know too much if you're too loud um, but also you're competing with people walking around it's a, you know, it's a live environment there's talking so you've got to be louder than that at, uh, but quieter than it uh, drowning and making people's ears hurt um, so that was again a lot of, uh, a lot of testing um, so one of the big considerations uh, in the uh, installation was the type of speakers that we used because we did have to fill the space um, and we used uh, spot effects uh, so when you'd walk past each little area you would hear uh, perhaps uh, some nature sounds so perhaps some birds tweeting some crickets um, in the nature areas if you'd walk past the lab you hear some bubbling and you could hear the, the camera flashing and the um, in the, in the family portrait area uh, but we didn't want that to spill of course across the whole area so there's some localized uh, speakers for that uh, which did involve a lot of research into sound diffusion and which speakers would be best and how to best place them and lastly we uh, decided it was best to drop uh, three uh, subwoofer speakers uh, into each zone kind of buried within the buildings uh, just to take the pressure off the, uh, the ceiling speakers and to give it a bit more depth. Uh, so in the ceiling, we had many, many of these. Uh, they're Martin uh, ACS 40 TS speakers. And um, what led us to using these, I had a nice healthy uh, four inch uh, low frequency driver and a three quarter inch um, HF dome tweeter. But the best thing is they have 180 degree conical coverage patterns. So we could fill as much space as we could from each speaker um, without um, having to put too many in the ceiling and it just making it look like um, you know some disco area and the spot effects we have these cool things they um, order come micro dots um, with a much smaller uh, diffusion space and uh, they're a lot more, a lot more localized now this is the, this is the money piece this is where it starts to um, kind of become very real so before we'd um, really done that much uh, creation of, of content before the, much of the music being created we came up with this plan of uh, what was going to go where and uh, that actually fed into the development of the, the music pieces itself 
Um, so the red ones we can see here, I can't remember how many there were, I'm sure we can count them up if you wanted. These were all the music. So as you come in down the escalator here and into the holding area, there's a music speaker here, there's a music speaker here, and uh, this is a curtain that once opens, you are free to walk around Montagne area. And there were seven speakers to cover all of Montagne. And they're labeled thusly um, MM127, so M being uh, Montagne and music and then one, two, seven. Um, so it was actually recorded, the music actually was um, recorded as a 5.1, but we doubled some of the speakers up to be able to get all the seven um, speakers covered. And uh, we just dotted, this alternated which speaker went where, so there was no phasing on those. And the music uh, for the next two sections, um, LCM, which is uh, La Col Music, one to four, it's quadraphonic, but uh, linear, laid out there. So you continue walking, um, all the overlap of the speakers make sure that the, um, the air is pretty much covered and uh, through to the next section which is the walkthrough area uh, which is just this had one speaker there and then there's a secondary linear quadraphonic uh, speaker set up around here uh, Granville music GM one to four the green ones are our, um, are our uh, atmospheric music sounds and uh, LED screen synchronization. So you've got uh, one, two, three here, left, center, right. So there was a kind of like a, a, a cinematic feel to that, having that center speaker. Again, they're all ceiling mounted. Um, but that was, these are the screens here. Enormous great bit LED screens are these kind of gray bits here, there, and up there. So they all have three speakers, left, center, right, um, within those. And additional to the um, atmospheric LED sync, there were also these green speakers here, which are ceiling mounted um, Atmos uh, speakers, which play pretty much nature sounds. Um, it's one of the big themes that they're very keen on was to um, represent uh, nature with, uh, within the installation. So this, these kind of like gingerbread forest areas uh, that had um, the Atmos track of of, of nature sounds um, of the French countryside actually um, and lastly you can see these small purple dots here these are our spot effects and um, Montagne is absolutely laden with them and uh, this piece here these, these were the spinning dresses that we saw in the walkthrough these actually this was moved to here that section here so you could walk through and get closer to the dioramas with the Montagne building and then uh, the more spot effects here uh, within the two buildings. These ones here were the nature sounds. So they're actually, um, I think it's called the crickets uh, and birdsong um, with spot effects, which was very effective because you'd only really pick them up when you got fairly close to the nature area. And it really was very effective in making it feel like there were crickets and birds kind of within the area. So the brief, the music, after we, we kind of went with the, uh, the logistics of it first and uh, I was hit up with a brief of we think the soundscape should be a mix of dreamy magical and fairy tale esque music and also foley like singing uh, birds crickets uh, sewing machine sounds etc so um, it was the in terms of the spot effects within most of the buildings there were uh, fairly literal and uh, the music um, well, I'll play that uh, at the end. It was a 14 or 15 minute piece from start to finish, uh, which is a significant amount of music to write, um, especially when you have to consider it all has to work within each section and you could be anywhere within the installation and it still kind of works um, without having um, any conflict, musical conflict uh, between the different distinct areas. Um, and the best way to avoid that was not to have a too strong a pulse or meter or tempo going through it, nothing too rhythmic. Um, so you, you wouldn't hear you know, the, the effects of, uh, of a different section playing a different piece of music from the, you know, from the different section of the timeline and uh, would be conflicting with, um, uh, with another section you were in. It starts at night time, there's a sunrise, there's a daytime section, there's a, you know, hot air balloon and children playing in the, in, in the park and whatever. 
uh, and the sunset area and then there was a big firework display at the end which was uh, played across all of the LED screens and was uh, synchronized to uh, sound effects of fireworks um, and various other th things happened within this as well um, in terms of so, yeah, snow fading here's Christmas time so the snow um, glitter fades um, skyline transitions so these all kind of were part of the music score that was synchronized with it and the only real way to get around knowing what was happening was to do a crazy speaker audio and music matrix and uh, this shows us how many channels and tracks there were so the um, audio playback device uh, was 64 channels so that was one of our limitations so we kept it to 64 uh, until the point at which we decided that actually no, there needs to be some more uh, speakers for various spot effects and things like that um, so we started dubbing some of them up it's split into these zones so you've got the holding zone here when you're waiting behind the curtain um, the audio event is this is just a kind of chronological one to um, one to 70 so there were 70 channels effectively um, why that's different to the channel number as you can see is because we didn't have 70 channel we had 64 so we doubled some of them up and Montagna had its seven music ceiling speakers um, but a five channel output so we doubled uh, the speaker six and speaker seven we took a feed from speaker two and speaker three they were quite far away from each other so they didn't really affect each other um, so that was yeah Montana Music, uh, Montana Sub had its own LFE channel uh, Montagna Atmos, this is the LED synchronization, and uh, these are all these spot effects things like camera flashes, elevator sounds, uh, yeah, um, sound effects of people dancing and partying in, uh, in the Parisian street, and uh, sewing machines, and the like. And I also had to develop a uh, filing naming system as well uh, in order to each audio file you could see. It was an audio um, audio event there, there we go. what the audio event number is, uh, what the speaker name it's going to, what channel the playback is on, and uh, what the speaker number it is. So we had to yeah, develop this whole uh, system of just for the filing, just for the file names. And uh, yes, and so the next two sections were, oh, okay, three sections. Uh, Le Col Noir and uh, Granville um, had, of course, their own music, their quarterfinal music and um, all the Atmos, uh, the separate garden Atmos uh, within the uh, nature area. Um, this got confusing. There was, it's one of the things added in towards the end is that we had our four zones, uh, but there was a, a technically a fifth zone because there was a walkway tunnel between uh, La Condoire and Granville. So we had to find a way of, of um, just filling where there was a, a, a sonic gap hole um, which on paper it didn't seem like it would be too much of a problem but when we started doing tests and walkthroughs you realize that this, this kind of like this quiet area really detected from the, um, the immersion of the experience um, <clears throat> small channel sharing here um, speaker numbers channel numbers are different uh, the rest of them correlate and uh, that's how you make sense of multi-tracking multi-channel multidisciplinary multimedia okay then I'll, uh, I'll open up some logic sessions. So this is uh, what the music looked like in terms of a score. Um, it's um, essentially orchestral, I suppose, orchestral piece. Um, unashamedly Christmassy as well. So we've got our Celeste in there. We've got some uh, sleigh bells and various percussion that sounds Christmassy. Pizzicato strings and, and harp and uh, yeah, it sounds lovely. Music box, um, which is actually um, one of the dioramas. Um, and I'll, uh, well, I'll play the finished piece synchronized to the LED screens in a bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is kind of. So just a taste of it there. So I'll put the music as, uh, as one, uh, one logic session and then each of the um, LEDs had their own separate um, uh, logic session. So this would be the um, 
the left, center, right uh, video synchronization LED screen uh, tracks. Very things happening in there. Sparkly sounds, twinkling bells, and uh, the sound effects of, uh, of, of of the changing environment as well. So there's a, there's a Parisian street recording there, and then it goes into uh, nighttime ambience and town. So that was multiplied by uh, by three different um, areas, and then the spot effects each had their own type of uh, logic session two, and the um, the sound effects actually kind of uh, faded in and out a bit. So they weren't con constantly playing the whole time, um, but they would have a, an audio file that went throughout it, which kind of faded in and out. Um, otherwise, it would be a bit of a cacophony of sounds, and some of them actually were uh, played in time as well. So there was a bit of a, a meter going through, a bit of a time signature that kind of stayed with the the, the three four um, recording of the music. So that played in time with the uh, with the music itself. Um, and despite it being uh, a clock ticking, uh, it was a it was a clock ticking out to alter it to match the BPM here of 135 BPM. And uh, I think that could take us nicely to uh, showing the uh, the end piece uh, of the music playing uh, synchronized to the the video. Shai, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, hey. Cool. First of all, a warm round of applause, please. For a very... <laughs> Fantastic. We are right, running slightly late. However, I'd like to stall proceedings and, um, and, and uh, spend a bit of time picking your brain, if you don't mind. Uh, questions from the floor, perhaps? I have a gazillion questions. So especially stuck with me. Um, in a conversation about a year ago, when we spoke about composition practice and our activities as composers, our approach to projects, uh, I think you summarized your approach as uh, just throwing the bathtub, the zinc, everything at a project in one shot. Um, how did you go about things in the case of this project? Did you work piecemeal? Is are there themes running, uh, musical or sound themes running throughout the composition, uh, throughout the work? How, how did you go about to get started? That's essentially my question. Ah, uh, yes, I, I took a much more traditional approach, um, old school composing of uh, light motif and uh, theme and variation. <laughs> right. So um, yes, it was because I was sharing so much with the um, the kind of the uh, head ponchos at, at Dior. Um, they wanted lots of little things to work with, and uh, and any time they liked something, I'd just kind of run with that and follow that, and uh, and and multiply that. 
Right. So the you were you were basically facing some very clear cut uh, parameters that you had to work within, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, constantly uh, having to fit around um, other actions that were happening because um, I mean you know physical me mechanical items moving around which yeah. having sound effects and and trying to underscore something with you know with speakers in the ceiling for something that's happening here whilst on the other side of the um, of the installation. Uh, there are other things happening yes. as well. Yes. Mm. Wow. Excellent. Um, so that was the the first first uh, salvo from my side. Uh, William Fury, whom you know, is with us, and I'd like to invite him to the microphone, please, William. Uh, thanks so much for for this sharing this really rich work with us. <clears throat> I've got like a really nuts and bolts question around the sort of processing. Um, in the venue itself were you running all 64 channels from one machine or did you create a like a network of machines to or like yeah where, where was the playback coming from and, and feeding into the speakers i was hoping i wouldn't get this question and i'll tell you why <laughs> uh, because i had a whole team of people to do it for me uh, yeah. um it was no it was running off one i can't remember what the um what the system was called we tried two um but the the there was a guy that created technologies who are absolute geniuses at, at uh, working these things out and it was uh, one multimedia um streaming um system um that they that they used and a huge huge um server um and that synchronized 64 audio channels were actually um was it was that was that was the least amount of processing that was going on it was the like 19 projectors and um wow. all the uh, mechanical triggers that actually sucked up all the uh sucked all the processing juice and several times certainly during during the get in and the setup video would just go down repeatedly sure. because it was just the amount of processing was having to do yeah. Um, but yeah, the audio we handled it no problem. Actually, we probably could have doubled it to one twenty eight if we really wanted to push our luck. Okay, and in yeah, terms but it was of, like, yeah, running off one system. Yeah, and in terms of interface um, with with the system, did you stick it out to a desk? This sounds like a really ridiculous question when you're dealing with this amount of channel, channels. But I'm just yeah, think. Uh, no, again, it was uh, because it was run through a um, a system that was it's a multimedia playback device, so. Oh, so it had um, an interface built in already. So it did. I mean, actually, the, the, on the sound sound wise, I think it went through uh, four Motu units. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. You know, something like that. So the outputs on that were, yeah, there were FireWire daisy chain FireWire okay. connectors um, that uh, that ran that, that the server just ran. I I have infrastructure envy right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've got actually I took a photo if, if I could share the screen at some point I did take a photo of the um of the of the wiring at the back. <laughs> because Brilliant. yeah it was that interesting. I'll try and dig that out. Yeah great. Anyways that that's me. Thanks. Oh cool. While you're digging, I'd love to see that photograph, by the way. So, so if you would like to pull it up at some point, it'd be great. Um, another practical question from my side. Uh, this, uh, this is a, a massive building. It's, it's a commercial venture. It's, it's, it's a business. Did they allow you in regularly on a regular basis to rehearse, to try out stuff? Or how, how does one prepare? They shut the entire side of the basement down for the installation okay um so it was off uh, off limits to public and because it was um it was only ever announced at some point before you know the day before um it went live yeah um it was complete non-disclosure no one's allowed to say anything about it right um they they had to we had to i mean harris it's, it's, you don't realize it's just one building there but beyond it this is this, this enormous um kind of rabbit warren of, of of tunnels and stuff that run all over knightsbridge so we had to had to go in on the other side of the road, right? Um, go through the security clearance, uh -huh. go through the staff tunnels. I mean, and it was the, again, it was just winding rabbit uh, rabbit warren of tunnels, and come out where the installation thing was. So it was all very kept under wraps, uh, which meant that we actually, you know, in terms of working space, um, the whole yeah, that whole section was just completely shut down to the public. But there was also probably at sometimes between 10 to 20 trades people working in there actually creating yes. the set and, and the you know the infrastructure the tech behind it and yeah. the wiring i mean there's something like 10 miles of 
cabling that went into it. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, I think you, 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 hit, you hit the, the core of my question is you, you can't try out this stuff in a listening environment and then just transplant it. It's not going to work, you know. You, it has to be in situ, so to speak. So, wow. Um, yeah, magnificent, uh, magnificent project. Any, any further questions from the audience? Spesh, thank you for your time, and we look forward to, uh, to, to your next presentation at the next symposium. Take care. <laughs> Pleasure. Bye.